So Russia's sitting in the catbird seat, as they say. They just need to kill Ukrainian troops, which they're doing very efficiently. The Ukrainians are about to comply with more dead Ukrainians by launching this 100,000-man counteroffensive into well-prepared Russian defensive positions in Kharkov. They'll lose those 100,000, and then Russia will continue its in incremental advance. But the, the thing is, the Russians, Putin has said, we could win this war now, but I'm not willing to suffer those losses, that there's no need for us to sacrifice these troops. Time is on our side. And he, for the first time, has put a marker on the calendar saying that we expect Zelensky to go sometime in the spring of 2025, which means that Russia will begin the process of looking for someone to negotiate termination of this conflict in the spring of 2025. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have a special report on the recent developments in the Ukraine conflict. Strap in as we dive deep into the latest events, numbers, and strategic moves. And don't just take our word for it, Scott Ritter, the former United Nations weapons inspector, has some insights that we'll share with you. Let's get started. This past week has been nothing short of a nightmare for Ukraine. We've witnessed record-breaking losses that will go down in history. The Ukrainian forces have suffered a staggering loss of 13,820 personnel. But that's just scratching the surface. Let's break down the carnage. In Kharkiv, the losses reached 1,560. In Kapiansk, a shocking 3,230 a number unprecedented in this conflict. Chasiv Yar wasn't spared either, with 4,410 casualties, while Avdivka saw 2,950. And let's not forget Ugladar and Kherson, with 930 and 740 respectively. These numbers represent more than just statistics. They tell the story of a nation struggling to maintain its footing against overwhelming odds. Each figure is a stark reminder of the human cost of this conflict. And the impact isn't limited to the battlefield. These losses have a ripple effect on Ukrainian society, from the morale of its citizens to the stability of its government. With every soldier lost, Ukraine's ability to defend itself and maintain order diminishes. And what about the tactical operations? Yesterday, Russia released a video showcasing the destruction of Ukraine's S-300 system in Odessa. Not just that, but Russia also launched missiles and bombs targeting Mykolaiv, Kherson, and the strategic airport in Kamelnitsky. This airport was a key target, and Russia's strategy was nothing short of brilliant. UAVs cleared the skies of anti-aircraft missiles, paving the way for ballistic and cruise missiles. Finally, the Kinzhal missile struck from the north, leaving Ukraine defenseless. The result? A severely compromised Ukrainian defense and a significant hit to their capabilities. The airport, crucial for receiving F-16 jets, now lies in ruins. These strategic strikes have not only crippled Ukraine's military infrastructure but also showcased Russia's advanced military tactics and technology. This meticulous planning and execution serve as a warning to any adversaries contemplating engagement. As if military losses weren't enough, Ukraine's infrastructure took a massive hit too. Russian missiles targeted the thermal power plant in Ivano-Frankivsk, obliterating it. Now, Ukraine's power generation capacity is under 10%. This has left Ukraine struggling to keep the lights on, quite literally. The destruction of such critical infrastructure not only affects the military but also has severe consequences for civilians. Hospitals, schools, and homes are now without power, plunging the country into deeper crisis. With the power grid down, essential services are struggling to function, making daily life increasingly difficult for the average Ukrainian. The ripple effects of these strikes are felt far and wide, affecting everything from water supply to emergency medical services. This week, Russian forces have shot down 600 UAVs, 6 ATACMS missiles, 8 Patriot missiles, and 61 HIMARS rockets. On top of that, 56 Ukrainian soldiers surrendered. If we look at the numbers, Ukraine's daily losses averaged nearly 2,000. On two record-breaking days, the casualties were 2,345 and 2,286. This week marks the highest losses ever recorded in this conflict. If this continues, Ukraine could lose 56,000 soldiers in a month, more than during last year's counteroffensive. Even Zelensky admitted to the severe losses, stating they are running out of soldiers. These admissions highlight the desperate situation Ukraine finds itself in. 
With each passing day, the hope of turning the tide diminishes and the grim reality sets in. These staggering numbers reveal the extent of Ukraine's struggles on the battlefield. It's a stark reminder of the brutal reality of war and the heavy toll it takes on a nation's military and civilian population alike. But it's not just the battlefield that's heating up. The world watched as former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden clashed in a televised debate. Amid global chaos, they argued about who's better at golf and who has a worse personal life. While Ukraine burns, these leaders argue over trivial matters, showing the true state of Western leadership. The juxtaposition of these events underscores the disconnection between Western leadership and the realities on the ground in Ukraine. It's a stark reminder of the priorities, or lack thereof, of those in power. These debates, while seemingly inconsequential, reflect the broader disarray and lack of focus in Western political circles. As global leaders bicker, the world edges closer to more significant, potentially catastrophic conflicts. But it's not just the battlefield that's heating up. The world watched as former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden clashed in a televised debate. Amid global chaos, they argued about who's better at golf and who has a worse personal life. While Ukraine burns, these leaders argue over trivial matters, showing the true state of Western leadership. The juxtaposition of these events underscores the disconnection between Western leadership and the realities on the ground in Ukraine. It's a stark reminder of the priorities, or lack thereof, of those in power. These debates, while seemingly inconsequential, reflect the broader disarray and lack of focus in Western political circles. As global leaders bicker, the world edges closer to more significant, potentially catastrophic conflicts. According to insights from Scott Ritter, NATO has ramped up its reconnaissance efforts with a massive deployment of spy planes. From the Baltic to the Mediterranean, NATO's surveillance network is in full swing. But the Russian defense minister, Mr. Belisov, has issued a stern warning. No more tolerance for American UAVs over the Black Sea. What this, no tolerance, means remains to be seen. But one thing is clear, tensions are escalating. This increase in surveillance and subsequent warnings from Russia highlight the precarious nature of the current situation. One misstep could escalate into a broader conflict, drawing in more nations and complicating the war further. The aggressive posturing and heightened surveillance activities suggest that both NATO and Russia are preparing for any potential escalation. The geopolitical stakes are higher than ever, and the world watches anxiously. On the ground, Russia is making significant advances. In Eurozhaini, they've pushed nearly a kilometer forward, while in Staromayorsky, Ukraine's counterattacks are being swiftly neutralized. Ukraine's elite units, from the 102nd Mechanized Brigade to the 1st Guards Tank Brigade, are being decimated. Despite their best efforts, they are losing ground rapidly. The strategic importance of these territories cannot be overstated. As Russia continues to gain ground, Ukraine's strategic options become increasingly limited. The capture of these key areas not only shifts the tactical advantage in Russia's favor but also serves as a significant morale booster for Russian forces. It's a demonstration of their growing dominance on the battlefield. Let's take a step back. This war is not just about territory, it's a clash of strategies and wills. Russia, the victor, remains patient and calculated. Meanwhile, Ukraine, under the weight of relentless losses, is being forced into desperation. The numbers don't lie. The human cost is enormous, and it's clear, this war is grinding Ukraine down to its very foundation. This conflict has exposed the vulnerabilities and limitations of Ukraine's military strategy. With each passing day, the hope of a decisive victory slips further away. The broader implications of this conflict extend far beyond the immediate region. It's a struggle that tests the resilience and resolve of nations, with consequences that could reshape the geopolitical landscape. As we watch these events unfold, remember, this isn't just a distant conflict. It's a defining moment in history. And while Western leaders bicker and posture, the real impact is felt on the ground, where lives are lost, and nations are reshaped. Inspector Scott Ritter's observations highlight just how critical this situation is becoming. Stay tuned for more updates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay informed. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.